talk about Bitcoin and other digital currencies and how they work, how you can buy them, pay others, and get paid. Now, Bitcoin is a new currency that was created in 2009. Transactions are made with no middlemen, meaning no banks. There are no transaction fees, no need to give your real name, and more merchants are beginning to accept them. You can buy pizza, Amazon gift cards, and even manicures. So how does it compare to cash? Keep in mind, your money at the bank does not consist of these stuffed into cubby holes at the building down the street. When you look online at your bank account, what you really see is digital dollars, euros, yen, pounds, francs, etc., backed up on computer servers around the globe. Now, there are some differences, but for the purposes of familiarity and understanding the concept, right now, we are focusing on how cash and cryptocurrency are similar. Now, we already use digital currency when we use our debit cards, when we send a bank wire, when we make a payment online using our account number. Now, you can convert digital currency into paper money if you want to, and it's the same with Bitcoin. Like you can convert euros into dollars. You can convert Bitcoin into actual dollars, dollars, euros, etc., for example, by transferring funds onto a debit card and buying things at the store and online if you wish. You can also take that debit card down to the ATM machine and withdraw paper currency. Now, Bitcoin is not the only online digital currency. There's also Ethereum, Litecoin, and others. But let's focus on Bitcoin for now because it's the most well-known and widely used. So what do you do? How do you get started? Number one, use a smartphone and download an app that allows you to buy or get paid in Bitcoin. The most popular is an app called Coinbase. That's C-O-I-N-B-A-S-E. Number two, follow the instructions on your app to link your bank account or debit card to the app. You link your bank account number by typing your bank's online username and password or by verifying small deposits they will make over the next one to three days. Number three, you buy Bitcoin. So let's talk about how to buy Bitcoin. First of all, you'll see this app has a buy button. You simply click buy. You've already linked your bank account to your Bitcoin app and you simply type in the amount that you want to buy and you push buy. And now how do you get paid or pay someone else in Bitcoin? Okay, on this particular app, there's a, a little QR code here that you touch and it will show a, a digital sign and you simply click the share button and you share your digital code via text with the person that you want to pay you. If, if someone is going to pay you, they will simply send their uh, secret code. And it, this is a, a code like an account number that is the way to pay you. So if you were to give somebody your account number or and routing number to wire you money into your account, you simply send them your BitPay account number or your Coinbase account number. And that way they'll be able to pay you in Bitcoin or other digital currency. Okay. Now, why Bitcoins? Bitcoin can be used to buy merchandise privately. In addition, international payments are easy and cheap because Bitcoins are not tied to any country and you help eliminate the currency conversion fees. Uh, small businesses may like them because there are no credit card fees. Some people just buy Bitcoins as an investment hoping they'll go up in value. Now to increase privacy even further, you can tie your digital account to a company. And that's what we do. We form domestic and offshore companies. Transfers. People can send Bitcoins to each other using the mobile apps like we just talked about or on computers. And it's similar to sending cash digitally. Owning Bitcoins. Bitcoins are stored in a digital wallet, which is an app like we just looked at, which exists on the cloud, which is a series of servers around the world or on your own computer. The wallet is a kind of a virtual bank account that allows users to send or receive Bitcoins pay for goods and save their money. Can you be hacked? Very, very rarely because the encryption used is extremely strong. That's why it's called cryptocurrency because it's encrypted. The only way I know where someone has been hacked is when they've been careless with their password, 
by emailing it to someone or storing it on a computer that's hacked. So if you're careful with your password, it's far easier for someone to break into your house and steal your jewelry or pickpocket you when you're walking down the street than it is to take your digital currency. Through each Bitcoin transaction, there's a recorded public logs. The names of buyers and sellers are never revealed. Only their wallet IDs are. While that keeps Bitcoin users' transactions private, it also lets them buy or sell anything without easily tracing it back to them. Don't criminals use it? Well, sure, many criminals use cash, drive cars, eat restaurants, eat at restaurants, but should we banish these things simply because bad guys do them too? Now, we can simply use digital currency in legal ways, just like we use cash and debit cards in legal ways. So what's the future? Well, no one knows what will become of Bitcoin or other digital currencies. It's mostly unregulated, but that could change as governments get more involved. Is it a good investment? Well, now we get into an opinion, so I'll give you one. Uh, some people over the short term have seen increases in value as the currencies have become more popular. Some have seen decreases. Over the long term, however, I do not think it is any better of an investment than buying U.S. dollars as an investment. Keep in mind, as a digital currency, it's still a currency. It means it is a means to buy goods and services, not an investment. Uh, profitable corporations create value. They provide goods and services. They have plans and means to increase profits. If you invest in their stock, you may participate in that profit. You can study the roots, such as Apple coming out with a hot new product and can anticipate profit growth. You can see its cash reserves and its debt and make a reasonable analysis of safety and future growth. With digital currency, however, you simply have supply and demand and maybe a few other factors. You also have an unlimited number of new cryptocurrencies that the guy down the street may invent. So in my view, in my opinion, you do not have reliable routes to study as you would an intelligent investment such as corporate stock. So no, I do not see Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency as an investment over the long term. I would not leave large amounts of money in it. As a business owner, as long as it is legal and it's easily convertible into cash, which it is, I want to leave the door wide open when it comes to giving customers options to pay me. So how much do I need to know before I use it? Now, do you understand every detail of how your television transmits signals to, to the sights and sounds you see and hear on the screen? I certainly don't, and very few people do. We just turn it on and use it without knowing all the details. It's analogous to digital currency. Now, you can dig up the roots and study every aspect if that's your thing. But for most of us, we just need to know how to use it and how to keep it safe. So is cryptocurrency here to stay? Well, we'll see. Meanwhile, I hope this guide has been useful and will help you get started. Thank you.